love it or hate it, editing is a part of photography. And the better you are at editing, the better you're gonna become as an overall photographer. Taking photos is 50% of the whole job. You need to get to the job, you need to look at your light, you need to look at your composition, you need to direct your talent, and you need to shoot. And then you also need to get the right settings. And once you've done that, you then need to put them in Lightroom, choose a preset, and edit them. The other 50% is editing. If you haven't shot well and happy with the, with the way you've shot on a job, then the editing process can become grueling. So you really want to get good at editing so you can fix up the mistakes you made. I'm going to show you a few key things how I edit to create images that I'm very happy with. The first tip I want to give you is straighten your horizon. The more you get in camera, the less grueling it's going to be in post. And there's new things in Lightroom that have made it so much easier so you can really let the subject pop and allow the background to fade away a little bit. So you can actually fake a little bit of bokeh with reducing clarity. And I think this is really cool if you don't have like a prime lens, you can, you can do a few little tricks in the new Lightroom to really make your subjects pop. And that's what you want to do is, is draw the, the eyes of your viewer into the subject. You want to straighten that horizon, you want to compose correctly, you want to get the light right exposure. And there's all, the, all these little things you want to get right in camera, but if you don't get them right in camera, there's, little, there's some tricks in, of the trade in Lightroom, in the new Lightroom, that you can adjust to make things look like you've done them in camera. But ultimately, you want to get things right in camera, so there's less editing and less post. So let's learn a few tricks in the new Lightroom. I should do a lot of lifestyle work, so that becomes real second nature and composing and directing, and if you don't do that a lot, like that just takes time. But let's have a bit of a look on a raw, these, I've got three or four raw images that we'll take a look at, and we'll just adjust them a little bit, just to, just to nail it. Let's uh, jump into this. I'm just gonna re screen record here, and I'm, not gonna, I'm going to put my base presets on. So, so we've got Amy, and she's standing on a pole. There's a nice leading line here and she's center composed. So I really wanted to just have her relax, leaning up against the pole, looking at the sun, thinking, yep, cool. Gonna look out at the sunset here, lovely. And if we do a JB Film 1, which is my base presets, we warm things up a lot here. And you can see that it's 6,100 Kelvin. Um, it can be a little bit warm or a little bit too intense and sometimes, so we can bring that down and then we just wanna look at what we're doing here with the exposure and let's you want to expose for the subject always expose for the subject no matter what the background is doing now let's look at her face here and we're going to have a look at this the histogram as well like it's it's reasonably even spread now it's not too bad i actually think it's a little bit overexposed we don't have too many gnarly shadows and you can see that there's nothing too overexposed at the end here so if you don't know a histogram if it's really overexposed, what it does is that it'll just go all up into this corner and you can see it's really overexposed. And then if you've got a bunch of shadows that's just underexposed and there's no detail in the shadows, it comes right back to this side. So we want the histogram to look even, nicely even, evenly spread. So that's quite nice there. So then I also think that it still could be a little bit warm, it could be uh, up in a little bit in the exposure. Now let's go R and look at what we're doing with the horizon. So tip one is always straighten your horizon. I know that this is just for me. I like my clean images. I like horizon straight. I like symmetry. And if you're like me, you like symmetry and you want to do this. So my tip one is straighten your horizon. Uh, look at what's happening in the background. We don't want it to be too skew if. okay? She's center composed. We've got a leading line coming through here, uh, which is lovely. We've got more leading lines over the back here with that jetty and also bringing your eye into her there from the bank along the, along the sand's edge there. And she's leaning on a pole. So I want to center compose her there and allow the leading lines to do the work. And if we press F there, we've gotten, we're going to expand it up nice. Now, I actually wouldn't mind going a little bit warmer here uh, straight away. Okay, so we've pressed R, we've straightened the horizon. It looks good to me. Look at along the back, you click on it and you can just do a few little squiggle here, a little wiggle of it. Nice, okay, we're gonna enter there. 
So straighten your horizon. And like I said, always expose for the subject. Expose for her skin, okay? So whites could probably come down a little bit, to be honest. We can bring the whites down or bring the blacks down a little bit. And just creates a little bit of, just a little bit of contrast. Now the shadows can come down a little bit in the background, nothing too crazy. Now we're gonna, I see that clarity minus 10 and dehaze minus 10. That creates a little bit of dreaminess in, in the images, I think, not too sharp. So I don't, the images don't need to be really sharp. The camera does the work with all the sharpness. So I wanna just dull that down a little bit with clarity and dehaze. Now, sometimes uh, I wouldn't mind just allowing the vibrance to pop a little bit more, but again, don't oversaturate your images. Keep them a little bit muted in the colors, if you like my style. Otherwise, go for it. Oversaturate the hell out of them. But I don't think it looks very professional when you do. So we're gonna do minus six and minus four. Then go command two. I'm gonna bring down the highlights a little bit, just to flatten it out slightly. Just get that little bit of a faded look. Command one, how does it look? And now let's press tab, and that's what it used to look like. And then we'll press tab again. So we've got these nice warmer tones there, uh, a little bit of warmth in the shadows, or in the highlights, I should say. But let's look at what we're doing. Okay, so shadows, a little bit of warmth. So you can bring that up slightly, and then in the highlights, press Command and bring that around, and then press Shift, and just adjust it to allow, there's more shadows, so there's more shadows in the highlights. Again, you don't wanna to go too over the top, but I'll just give it a little bit there. So we'll go Command 1, go back down. So now, let's work through them, okay? So Command 4, Command 5, sometimes I go straight to Command 8, Give it a little bit of grain depending on what the style of the photo is. So I like this style. I like the Billy Bones, the, the jeans. It's, it's a little bit of a 90s vibe. So I, I'll go about 35 with the grain and then go back to Command 1 and look at what we're dealing with there before, after. Okay. Command 5, Command 6. Let's just make sure enabling profile corrections are on. If they're not on, what happens is you get a little bit of vignetting around the edges. See, that looks a bit gross. So you wanna enable profile corrections and then also I, you can see the information's on the top here and that just shows what, you, what you've shot at. So I'll get rid of that just so I can see, well, there's a crane up there. Don't love it, but it's, hey, whatever. Um, it's gonna be a bit, oh, it won't be too hard to, do that, but that's in Photoshop. So let's just concentrate on bringing the eye of the viewer into your subject. So what we can do here in this new Lightroom is there's some cool features here. So we go to this masking and go subject, sky or background. So let's just click on subject. And usually this is really good. And what it does is just highlights the subject. And then from there, you can, you can do some, you can make some changes. So it's super, it's done a really good job here. You can see it's just got right on her. How good is that? It's just, yeah, technology is crazy with this new Lightroom. All right, so then we wanna, so we know the overlay's on her now. So now we wanna just turn off the overlay and make some adjustments. So let's just bring up the clarity a little bit on her body. Uh, let's just bring up the shadows slightly and Oh, the tiniest bit of exposure, not much though. And then you can go back up here and you can press the eye. So a little eye button here. So you go off, on, off, on. It's so subtle, it's, it's hardly anything there. But I just wanted to bring up the shadows. That's what I do on every model, every talent, every subject. It's just bringing up the shadows, bringing up the clarity and bringing up the exposure a little bit. And then we can go create new mask again and then let's go select background, see what it does. So in this new Lightroom, it just selects the background and you can create a bit of bokeh if you want. So you can do it in camera in a nice prime lens and just go down, your, like open the aperture wide, wide open, or it's not really bokeh, I guess it's a bit of fake bokeh. So what it's done here is really uh, highlighted the background. So we'll go, 
drop the clarity. So it just drops the clarity in the background. You can bring the shadows down, bring the exposure down, and that's way too much. You wanna, it's just a lot of, a lot of subtleties, okay? You don't want it to be too crazy. Um, otherwise you can really notice. You don't want it to notice. You just want it to be like a nice smooth image where you can just, where she just pops or the subject pops and it's just, it just feels right. And that just takes time, I think. Now I'm noticing, I wouldn't mind to bring up this, the watercolor here, just to make it pop a little bit. So let's go luminance, click on that, click on the selector, and then just drag, drag your fingers up. So it just brings it up slightly in that color, just a little bit, and then we'll go a bit of saturation, also do the same thing, saturation on the water, bring up that teal, just to make it pop a little bit. So we've got a little bit of complementary colors then. If we've got a nice little teal, blue teal uh, color in the water, and then we've got some warmth on her face and in the highlights, we've got these nice complementary colors. And that's just color science. Um, if you look at the color wheel, what is nice to look at is, is like complementary colors on the color wheel. So that's sort of what I'm going for whenever I'm shooting around water, that's blue, and then in my warmth edit, it just creates that nice complementary colors. So don't go over the top with it, just, just do a little bit there. Back to command one. Now what did it look like? Let's press tab. There we go. And now we've got, with that base presets and a few, few edits, a few adjustments, we've got this quite nice image here. She looks relaxed, she's looking out, hands are in pockets, and it's, and it's quite a nice image. These leading lines are coming in. What else can we do to zhuzh it up a little bit? I don't really look at too much of what's going on with the primary colors there. If I'm not happy with the colors, you could just bring it down. The reds, there's not a lot of reds in here. So I'm okay with that. Let's move on. Okay. Straight up, JB Film 1. Let's see what that does. Should up the, sh oh yeah, I like that. So that has desaturated the things and let's straighten the horizon straight up boom and composition so all right so we're looking at composition what does it look like if she's center composed here press f and look at what your subject's doing so when you're directing someone and if they're looking to the left like i'm over here and i'm looking there you want to have me in the left third where if i'm over this side of the screen i'm looking that way you want to have me in this third of the screen so compose your image the way that the way they're looking at it feels a bit trapped if someone's like looking over this way and there's not a lot of room, unless you want to be intentional and make it feel trapped and feel a little bit claustrophobic. But in this situation, she's looking down into the water, so allow the viewer to look down into the water with her. So we want to bring the, so we want to compose it this way, so she's in the left third, so we've got some negative space sitting there in the right third, and she's, so we're looking down there with her. And I really think that complements the image because if she was like this, if she was like this and we decided to, for whatever reason, shoot her in the, uh, shoot her in the right third of this image, it's like this, the viewer can't see what she's looking at. And I think it feels a little bit unnatural. Now you could probably get away with her being in the center possibly, but to me, it still feels a little bit claustrophobic. It still feels like she needs some negative space in front of her. So I really want to try and emphasize that negative space is really important and compose your subject at the way they're looking. If someone's standing on the beach with a surfboard looking out, put them in the right third so the viewer can see what they're doing. If someone's riding a bike put the, and facing that way, put them in the third so they're facing so the viewer can see what they're riding into. It's, it, that, that happens over time, you get this skill over time of, of composing and just seeing your favorite photographers doing the work, putting in the reps of shooting, that comes over time and your eye just, just you just train yourself to do it. Now, we could definitely up this a little bit. She's looking down, I love the rim light on this. If you haven't seen the, my other YouTube video, uh, I've expl I explained how to get this rim light with the sun shining in, I really like that. So. We're gonna up the highlights a little bit here. We're gonna up the shadows. Uh, I like the clarity down again, minus 10, minus 12. That's actually probably too many shadows. I might just bring that down a little bit because we're gonna use the new Lightroom 
features here to highlight the subject. So we're going to press subject and then we're going to, it should select her with any luck. A bit of time here. Perfect. Selected her. Select a little bit of the wood, but we can remove that. And what you do here is you press subtract, you go brush, and then you just remove a little bit of that. You just click it in and you can see here the feather and you've got your flow, which is 100% density. So you just want to remove that and my computer's going a bit crazy. And then you just, so she is the only thing that's highlighted. Now with the old Lightroom, you'd have to press option click, uh, but this one you just press subtract and it does it for you, which is really cool. Okay, done. Although, see, something that's a bit weird, this new Lightroom, that there's no done. So you've got to go back and press that or, or back to your mask, brush, mask. Let's go back into the mask and she's highlighted. All right, so show overlay, it's going to load and it should show her any second now, beautiful. All right, so we're just going to up the exposure a little bit on her, up the shadows, and then just a little bit of up the clarity. Be wary though, you don't want it to look too flat. So we can, we can just put down the blacks a little bit, just to create a little bit of contrast. Nothing too crazy, because you don't want her to pop too much. You just want a subtle pop. Okay, so we've gone exposure, we've gone a bit of shadows, we've gone clarity, but we've brought down the black slightly. All right, so that's that. Now let's create another mask and let's go a linear gradient just to bring your eyes in. We have this leading line coming through here, which is a nice, nice composed leading line. Just bring your eyes into her. She's now popping with a little bit of a, 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 of a mask. Um, <clears throat> But if we want to, if we want to like bring the viewer's eyes more into her, we can add these gradient filters, which has always been in the in previous Lightrooms. You can bring down the exposure slightly. But in saying that, like this is this is where this is where you kind of want to see what she's looking at. So let's go a linear linear gradient. Let's go back here, um, and let's just slightly drop the exposure behind her. Just so you just want to just soften the background a little bit, just make it a little bit less exposed. So it brings the viewer eye into her. You can drop the. It's like the opposite of what you do on the subject. You drop the exposure, you drop the shadows, and you drop the clarity. And that way it's just like doing the opposite and it's, and it's good. So another way you can do it is you go a radial gradient. And you can really overdo this very easily, but uh, it almost creates a natural vignette. So you've got her there, and then we can. What we can do that's pretty cool is you can go press the th press the three little dots there, and you go invert mask. And what that will do is you invert the mask. What's everything around this this radial filter now, and and that will then now uh, do n do the opposite of her. So you can bring that down now. And that brings, slightly brings the exposure down, bring the shadow down, bring the clarity down around her. So that's a nice little tip. Just invert the, gra the, the radial filter to allow the background to just drop a little bit so your subject can pop. Love it. And now I like this style of her being a bit, a bit like 90s here. So we'll bring up some grain. We'll go 35 grain, which is my go-to. Computers says no. Computer says no. It's battling here. I don't know why. Maybe because I'm recording at the same time. It's going to explode. Okay, so let's have a look at what is before. After. It's warmed up. Now, I also think let's add a little bit of color to the... Let's go saturation. And click on this button here. 
And then let's just add a little bit of saturation to the water because it's looking a little bit dull for my liking. We want to create those complementary colors again. We've, we've, we've sorted out the composition and she's looking down. We've created negative space by cropping it. And now let's bring up the color to create complementary colors. Nothing too crazy, it looks a bit much there. So you can bring it down a little bit. There's so many things that can add to the image. It's the story, it's the leading lines, it's the composition, it's the complementary colors. And if you're using all these things while you're shooting in camera, you can really create a nice image and that way it will help you so much more when you're diving into the edit because you're just, just giving them a little bit of a boost in the edit. So try and get most things done right in camera so there's less to do in post. Now we've got her in this nice composition. Let's look at what was before. Now we've got before, after. The exposures come up on her face, on her body. We've yeah, introduced a little bit more color into the water, providing that complementary colors. We've composed her nicely looking down. You've got that negative space. We've created a, a couple of masks here, radial filter to just bring the viewer's eyes into her. Uh, you've got that mask shining, just taking away a little bit of exposure on there. Uh, another thing that we can do, that sometimes do when there's a nice rim glow. So we could add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of dehaze to her, to the back, to give a little bit of a fake sun, if you will. So you can almost just up the exposure slightly. Let's do it extreme. So if we're doing it extreme, we'll go like that. Crazy, too much. So we just want to give a little bit, little bit of, uh, of, of a fake exposure there. This just helps bring a little bit of glow to the hair and that rim light. And what you can do uh, sometimes as well is like up the, the temp. So we could just make this a little bit, a little bit warmer, a little bit glowy, uh, just to complement that nice sunset feel of like the glowing colors of, of warmth. And if we have a look up here, that's before, after, not a lot. Very subtle, very subtle. Now what else I would do is probably go into Photoshop and remove this, but in this new Lightroom, we also have some clone stamp, we have a little brush tool here, we have an eraser there. So let's see what it does here. And you just slide your fingers up and that expands it. And we just click and drag. And I know there's a reflection in the water here, but let's see what it does with this new Lightroom because you couldn't do this in the old one. And it'll go and look at something else. It's like a clone stamp. Usually it's not that great. I'll need to take it into Photoshop, but give Lightroom a chance. Click on that. And that is kind of average to be honest. Press F, have a bit of a look here. I think I can already tell, I think I'm gonna notice it and it's not really good enough, especially if you're delivering it to a client. Yeah, that kind of sucks. So for this example, not the best. It's just, Lightroom doesn't do the best. Press, click on it, press delete, and that should come back. And then you could try something else, like try this eraser thing here. Let's just see what that does. Analyzing, again, I don't think this does a very good job. I usually clean things up in Photoshop. Use the clone stamp, use the brush tool in Photoshop just to clean things up a bit. Yep, horrible, cool. Take it into Photoshop. You know what, let's, let's do it. Okay, so that does a really average job, to be honest. So let's go, what, if you wanna clean your images up in Photoshop, what you do is you go, when you're in Lightroom, go photo, you go edit in, Photoshop, and then Photoshop will come straight up. And then what you can do is make a, a, a duplicate it and then make your adjustments. To get the most out of your images uh, when you're on the job, you really need to be thinking of the edit. Think of how you're gonna edit it and compose for it. So there's so many little things that you have to think about on the job. So when you bring it into your Lightroom and your editing software, you can easily edit it. So you've got a plan in, in place. So in this image, I told her to look for fish. And I knew I was gonna create negative space for the viewer to have a look at it. So what we do here is we duplicate that 
And then what actually works quite nice is this lasso tool. So let's lasso around this reflection. Close it up there, close the gap, press right click, you press fill, and then it goes content aware, 100%, press OK. And this does a pretty good job. See, it's still glowing there, so we're gonna be thinking, then you press Command D, that gets it away. Does a way better job than Lightroom. I'm happy with that. And then if you wanna do again with this other pole in the background here, what we can do is do the same thing. Content, right click, content aware, fill, yep, content aware, opacity 100%, okay. And then that gets rid of it. Command D, deselects it, and then we're clean again. Now we've got a bit of a reflection here from the pole there. So then what you can do is up the size of your brush tool and sometimes brush, you can be a bit rough with it. And it just, because it's water and there's, there's weird ripples anyway, it's fine. You can just be a little bit rough with it and you can't really, you can't tell at all with the ripples in the water with that brush tool brushing down the reflection of that pole that was there. Now, if you click the eye, you can see what was there. Now it's not. See, it's cleaned the images up and it's taken away that distraction. When you're looking at the photo, you're looking at these poles and you're seeing what's in the background. But the way I feel that you can get ahead in photography is to clean the images up, bring the viewer's eye into your subject. And that's what I feel like cleaning these photos do. It removes the what's in the background, right? Because it's not only what's in the image, it's what's not in the image. And I don't want these distracting things in my photos that takes away the viewer's eye. I want them to look at my subject and instantly see the story and feel something. And that's what this does by cleaning photos up in Photoshop. Strive for clean images, really do. Now, if you want to, you can even take away these, these rails. Um, in, in the edit, I actually, in the one I posted on my Instagram, I actually got deep here and took away all these, every single little, little thing of, of these poles to that extent. Now you don't have to because that's, I don't know, it's just this thing. I, was like, I thought, what does it look like without them? And I thought it looked a little bit cleaner without them. So that's again, it's the brush tool. Take away these little black distractions, you know, here, there. And I just think these little small things add up to a cleaner image again, and it just creates a nicer photo. So you can press F, F again, and she, she's looking down, super clean image. You've got some negative space through here. I like the colors in the water. Uh, you've got this rim light over the back of her hair here. She's nicely exposed now. And it's just a, it's just a nice storytelling piece. She's just looking down and I just feel it's a nice clean image and you've got the leading lines here, nicely exposed. And I like that, like uh, simplicity in my images with storytelling is what I strive for. So this is just a nice image, I feel. What we wanna do to bring this out of Photoshop and back into Lightroom to save it in the Lightroom catalog is you press Command W and this comes up, save changes, save. And this automatically saves it. It knows that it wants to save into your Lightroom catalog, brings it into Lightroom. If we go back into Lightroom, we'll see it here. It's duplicated it, it's made two out of, it's made one out of two images now. So we've got the original image in there, in that catalog. And then you've also got the image that you've just adjusted in Photoshop. Pretty awesome how they work side by side like that. I'm really happy with that image. I like the complementary colors. I like the way it's looking. I like it's composed. Now, all right, let's go one more. JB Film. JB Film on this works really nicely. Okay, could be, now it's a good base. We'll get rid of that. We'll bring down the temperature a little bit. Nice, and then I think we'll bring up the exposure slightly. As you can see here in the histogram, we've got a lot of shadows, but you want to expose for the subject. So you want to look at her skin tones, look at the way she's exposed. Is she nicely exposed? I think she is at the moment. She could uh, come up slightly. So what we can do is we'll press the masking, we'll select subject, we'll, look, we'll allow Lightroom to look at the subject. We'll see if it can mask her out. Uh, and usually it does with this new Lightroom. And then we can just make a few adjustments from there and we can up the exposure, up the shadows, up the contrast. Uh, from there, we can up the exposure, up the shadows, up the clarity of the subject to make her pop. And then we can invert the mask and bring the background down, bring the clarity, bring the shadows, bring the exposure down to really allow the subject to pop. 
So let's go shadows, let's go clarity, let's go exposure, not too much. Remember, we don't want to overdo it. Cool, create new mask, let's go select subject again. You can select people, which does a pretty good job. Uh, you can select the sky, if the sky is a bit overexposed, you can select, so let's go select subject. Um, and then we'll invert it, so we'll go the three dots, invert mask two, does a pretty good job, and then we can down the exposure there, just to, just, just slightly. Uh, bring the shadows down again, just a little bit slightly, bring the clarity down, and look what it does. It does a really good job here. It will press tab, and before, after. Nice, I think I might up the vibrance a little bit, not too much, let's go minus six, she looks good. I haven't even adjusted the, the composition here, but I want her to be, in this one you can't see where she's looking. So for this situation, I'll usually still just center compose her because the viewer can't see anyway. So I like it, I think I like it center composed. We've got these nice leading lines here from the, the logs that it, she's sitting on and behind her back. So I, I like that, I think that's quite cool. Press F, have a look at it. And bigger views, you can just, just take a little bit of a step back, look at what, you, what you've what you done. I like this, I like the set and compose, I like her just hanging out with the arms, she looks relaxed, she looks natural, and that's really cool. Now, I honestly wouldn't do too much more, maybe a little bit of grain just for the hell of it. Uh, 35, Command 1, Command 3, Command 4, what are we doing in the highlights? warmth, if we up the highlights and made her warmer, it would change her skin tones. And I don't want to change her skin tone to make it too much warmer, because they're already quite warm anyway. Um, so I think that's quite nice. If anything, what we could do is we could go mask, we could go create new mask, we could go radial filter, and we could just do what we did in the, and we can just do what we did in the last one, which is, if anything, what we can do is go mask, we go radial filter, and we can highlight her, and then we'll go up here to three dots, we'll go invert mask three, and what it does is it inverts the mask around the subject, and then you can bring the exposure down. And that brings the viewer's eye into the subject. So you just don't want to, you just don't want to do it very lightly. Down the exposure, down the shadows, down the clarity, and what it does, it creates a little bit of a natural vignette to bring the eyes, the viewer of the eyes into the subject. So Amy's there sitting on the log, so it just creates a little bit of shadows. She pops out of it, and you just, it's just, it just looks like a nice relaxing photo of her just looking away, and I like that. So think about the radial filters, think about the, the gradu, graduated filters to bring the viewer's eye into the subject. And let's have a look at tab, press tab. I'm gonna go before, after, nicely exposed, relaxing photo, good portrait. I don't mind it at all. Now keep in mind of your, your, your focal length. What are you shooting on? So I shot this on the, there's a bit of details here on the top right, just below the histogram. You can go, you can have a look at it. So you've got ISO 500, 35 mil, 1.8, 1 320 of a second. So if you're ever interested in, in what you shot at and you're like, oh, I can't remember what I shot this. It, it sits right there. And you can also press I and it'll come up on the top left of the screen. You see the time, date, the raw file, uh, what it is in the, the measurements, and also you press I again, which is information, and it'll come up with the information. 1 3 20 of a second, F1.8, ISO 500, even says what I shot it on the 35 mil macro lens, 1.8 IS STM. So it's really cool, Lightroom knows exactly what you shot on. If you ever forget what you want, if you really like an image and you can't remember what focal length you shot at. Very cool. Now let's go to the next one. We're going to go to JB Film 1, and I'm going to show you something that I do here that is pretty cool. I think that's, this is a really beautiful light. It was really nice in the afternoon. Everything's golden. You've got this dust from the harvesters, and this was shot on the DJI Air 2S. And I want to bring the exposure up a little bit, but I want to also just bring that warmth down a touch, because it's a little bit warm, a little bit gnarly for my liking. And if we're gonna go rule of thirds, let's just have a little bit of a look at the composure here, uh, the composition we want. I wouldn't mind bringing this up. So the top third is the horizon, 
and the bottom third naturally is is the subject so sometimes it's really nice if you can get in camera so create your subject to be in one of the third and then you even have the horizon in the top third sometimes it works out sometimes it doesn't but i think it's a little bit more pleasing on the eye when your subject is in the third horizon is in, in the top third when your subject sometimes i think it's a little bit more Sometimes I think it's a bit more pleasing when the subject is in one third, the horizon's in the other third, it's straight, creates a story that it comes natural. In this situation, the headers are in the bottom third, we're composing the horizon for the top third, and I think that's quite nice. We want to center compose the headers, and I like symmetry, so we're going to bring them both into the middle, and I like it. And now what you can do is up the vibrance a little bit, Let's even bring down this warmth a little bit because it's a bit heavy on it. Uh, and up the highlights, bring down the blacks. Might even bring up the exposure a little bit because it just, just brings a little bit more life to it. Command eight, see what it's like with 35 of grain. Uh, I really like how the clarity and dehaze are at minus 10. It just takes that sharpness off the image and just create, makes it like a little bit less digital. So it's, it's, a bit, it's a bit of a filmic look, it's just what I like to do in my images. It just takes that sharpness off, takes the edge off it, and just looks a little bit softer. The, the, I'm shooting on, most of the time, the R5 or these DJI drones, like things are really sharp. So I'm just, I'm just softening up the edges a bit. I've put, just put some grain on it, and let's go. So a cool trick here is I wanna show you guys is we'll go select subject, and it, look at that, selects the headers straight away. So we can up the shadows a little bit here if we want, just to make the subject pop slightly, bring up the clarity. And another thing I wanna do is show you is that <clears throat> what we can use on dust and, and, and a bit of mist and things like that. Sometimes if you're shooting in a dark area and there's, there's some light leaks from, from a window and it's like misty or there's some, there's some atmosphere in, in the image, is in Lightroom, what you do is you you just up the exposure slightly, up the shadows and whites, and you can accentuate the dust. See, what we're doing here is you just click on the dust or whatever it is, and you can see there, it's like creating a bit more atmosphere in there. So it just makes the image a bit more punchy. As you can see here, we'll click on the eye. We go before, after, before, after just creates a bit more punch in the in the dust, which is really cool. And it's very subtle, but uh, just make sure it's not too overdone. And you can do this with light leaks, sun exposure, uh, so let's say like rim light from a, a portrait. Just like, just up the exposure slightly, make it a little bit warmer, do what you just play around with it, experiment, and just creates a bit more of a punchy image with more atmosphere, which, which brings the eye in, brings the viewer's eye in, which I like. It brings my eye in to, to that dust to, to look at it and, and just, yeah, these small subtle things all add up to a nice image. And I reckon, so that's a little thing here. You can also, you can also, if you want, you can drop the clarity, bring up the clarity. You can see if it's going crazy here, we'll bring the clarity right down on the, on the dust or we go right up and see it's too much probably too much but I actually like it a bit more if we go up instead of down because it gives more clarity to it so but don't overdo it bring that up that's cool we'll go look what it looks like before after nice I like it and now that's that so just remember that little brush tool it's a cool little tip if you want to accentuate some dust shadows smoke things like that in an image now let's look at before after. Nice. I might bring down the saturation because it's a little bit saturated, I think. I don't like it too much. Blues are nice. Let's just maybe bring down the blue, the saturation a tiny bit. Uh, but again, we've got complementary colors. We've got this nice golden field and we've got the blue skies. So I like it. I'm always looking for complementary colors, composition, what makes a, a photo pop a little bit. Remember that color wheel. Really cool image. These two headers are going past one another. We've got this, we've got this nice dust. We've got like, yeah, the, the symmetry, the leading lines, like the beautiful atmosphere, the blue skies, the golden fields, and just some lines. It's just out in nature. I really like this sort of stuff. Um, 
don't love taking drone photos all the time, but I like to have my camera in my hand. But when it's like this, it's really cool. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I like this type of work. So that's that. And what else do I want to say about this image? I think it's, it's really, it's, it's nice. Um, and these are all edited with my JB Film 1 presets. So you can buy them on my website. I'll link them in the bottom, the description of this video. And there's four images done, edited up with a few little tips. Remember, straighten the horizon, think of the story, compose your subject, don't over edit. And if you can adjust a few things to make your subject pop, just always expose for your subject. No matter what the background's doing, try and, let, try and put, think of the light. Put your subject in like, even if it's in direct sun and the shadows in the background, expose for the subject so the background is darker creates a nice cinematic look. As soon as you start to put that in your head, unless you really want some nice rim light coming from the background and there's, there's backlit and you want them backlit, if you start thinking about that in all the photos you take, your images will be better. So expose for the subject, make your background darker. Creates more cinematic image and I'm trying to do that more and more in my own work. You can't do it all the time and I do love backlit images. Think of these things, experiment, look at the light, what the, the way the light's facing. Straighten your horizon, do everything in camera as much as you can, compose correctly, don't over edit, uh, don't, do, don't over saturate in, in Lightroom. Use these tools in Lightroom, it's such a good tool to create better images. Shoot as much as you can, get better in camera, then bring it into your Lightroom and, and get good at using this tool as Lightroom is so you can really make these images pop, tell a good story and be proud to put out work onto your social media and website and send them to the client. So thanks so much for watching, really appreciate. This is a long one, but if you love this editing, if you love my shooting, my style, uh, hit me up, social media, give me a comment. Uh, I would love it if you like, subscribe, share. Really appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you on the next one.